or think of um, actually putting yourself in danger. Somebody who, uh, a firefighter, a policeman who rescues somebody, actually puts himself into danger to save somebody who's not even related to him. My biologists always try to try to find um, genetic reasons why animals, especially, do altruistic things. Why they do things for others. And they always, they always say that uh, the reason, you know, there's always got to be some sort of self-interest in any action. It's kind of a, a, uh, an underlying principle of evolutionary biology. So if you see an animal do something for others, there's got to be some reason why that's better for himself. Somehow, either it's, it's because that, that other being is, is related, that they share genes, so by, by helping my brother, I'm actually helping myself because he shares you know, half, half my genes. And so by, by, by helping him, I'm actually helping my own genes, my own genes that are also in him, um, to survive the next generation and, and, and spread. Or even if I help someone who's unrelated, they always try to explain it and say that, oh, by doing this, I'm actually helping myself because if I help this person, then tomorrow he's going to help me and that's going to that's gonna help me again. That's a, a, a kind of godless bio, biological way of looking at, at things. But, but we know that human beings are able to, to transcend any of that. We're able to do things that are com completely to our detriment. There is, no, there is no benefit in it for ourselves, any worldly benefit in it for ourselves, and, and we're willing to sacrifice that benefit for the, the benefit of others. So something that differentiates us from animals is acting on, uh, based on intellect, right? sacrificing um, interests and sacrificing things that are, are immediately pleasurable to us for the sake of, of answering to our intellect. Acting on the intellect is then something that's human and we have a natural, we want to do things that are rational, we want to live a rational life so that we can differentiate ourselves from, from, from animals. It's, there, there's nothing more rational than knowing and believing in God. Sometimes, in the modern world especially, believing in God is, things, is a, a very irrational thing. Right? It's seen as something irrational to believe in something that you can't see. Something that's un intangible, that you can't empirically touch or feel or, or measure. It's right? seen as something irrational, that you have to suspend your intellect in order to believe in God. But in reality, it's, 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 uh, completely wrong, and there's nothing more rational than believing in an unseen God. We see a world around us that's all tangible, that's all physical, it's all limited. Nothing that we know of, nothing that we can touch and sense has any permanence to it. But that's something that we empirically see. Right, nothing is permanent. We ourselves are not permanent. And nothing around us, nothing in the in the universe is permanent. Everything had a beginning. Everything is bound by time. Everything will necessarily end. Our mind says that something like that could. There's no way that it could exist by itself without something else giving it existence. So there's nothing more rational than believing in a god that transcends all the limitations of the things that we see around us. That's actually rational. It's irrational to think that limited things could somehow pop into existence out of nothing. That's irrational. Right? And so, let me tie this all together. Human beings have an innate this desire to be above animals, and part of that, most important, uh, the most important component of that is to act rationally. And one of the things that our intellect tells us is that there is a God. Right? And the more we can know that God, the more certain we can be in that God, the more we're using that, that, that intellect that we have that differentiates from us, us from animals. So we're actually satisfying this desire that we have within ourselves to raise ourselves above animals by, by, by engaging our intellect and, and coming to know, know God. And so it's a little complex. It's not a, it's not a simple, simple thing at all. So the point then is to, to focus on this desire that we have within ourselves and feed that desire by using our intellect to know God. The Quran uses this, it, it uses this natural desire that we have within us by threatening that anyone who doesn't believe in God, who rejects God, is reduced to the level of animal. It knows that we, we, we abhor that. Like any human, like, it's, it's an insult to call someone any sort of animal. 
right? We use that, use those words as insults to say you're, you're, you're like a dog, or you're like, you're like a, you know, any sort of animal. We, we use those words for for insult, insulting people. If you call someone a cow, right? They're not going to take it well. It implies that they're, you know, they're, they're dull intellectually, they're, you know, lazy. They're, you know, those characteristics that are, would associate with that particular animal. And so the, the Quran uses this this gut feeling of, 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 you know, of hatred that we have towards, not towards animals, but towards, you know, being called animals ourselves. And it, and it uses this, and it says, for instance, in a couple of verses, in Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 7, 179, it says, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَعْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنِّ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُنْسِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا He said that we've made the beginning of the verse is a, a difficult verse theologically to understand but it says that we've, we've created many people, humans and jinn for hellfire now obviously Allah has created them for hellfire but He's created them um, with the ability to choose heaven or hell and these particular people have chosen hellfire. The reason is because they have hearts that don't think. Hearts, not physical hearts, but the heart, heart here refers to the intellect. They have an intellect, a mind, that they don't engage in, in thought with. So it's a useless sort of a heart that's been given to them. They have eyes that don't see. And they have ears that don't hear. We're familiar with the, the way the Quran talks about people who are like this as being deaf, dumb, and blind. People who are stubborn to the truth, who resist, who, who don't accept things that they know to be true. Right? They treat it, it's called the deaf, dumb, and blind. They might hear perfectly, perfectly well, and probably they do hear perfectly well, but because they don't hear the truth and it doesn't register with them, and they, 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 it's all as though they put their fingers in their ears, their ears are useless. So as, they're as good as deaf. They might as well be deaf. Blind the same way. They, they see the miracles. I think of Pharaoh, for instance. He, he saw the miracles just as clearly as those magicians saw the miracles of Moses. More clear. He, he's got two, two viewings of miracles. Right, one time Moses does it in, in court, in private, and then secondly in, in public, in the, in the big you know, festival. The magicians only saw that one time in the festival, but Pharaoh saw it twice. And the verse in the Quran says, in Surah Al-Nam, it says, وَجَحَدُوهِهَا وَاسْتَيْفَنَتْهَا أَنْفُسُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا And Pharaoh and those other people in his court who rejected Moses and said, no, you're not a prophet and, and you're lying, they, they rejected him despite the fact that they were absolutely certain, they had yaqeen, they were convinced that what he was saying was right. And it's possible to, to know something's right and still say, I'm not going to accept it. Right. So this verse is saying that there's these, these people are like this. They have hearts that don't think, they have eyes that don't see, and ears that don't hear. Then the end of the verse says, أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَانَ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلْ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْغَافِلُونَ It says these people are cows. These people are cows. Right, use that same sort of phrase that, that we abhor so much. These people are cattle. Rather, they're worse than cattle. They're more, they're, they're further astray than cattle. And cattle, there's nothing wrong with cows. They're not, they haven't fallen short of what they're supposed to do. Cows, at least they, they, they fulfill the, 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 you know, the, the roles that they've been given. They give their milk, they give their meat, they chew their cud. The things that they're supposed to do, to the extent that they can, they, they do them to the best of their ability. They're, they're fine. These people, though, they have